dedicated to the strength of the nation. Proudly we hail... from Hollywood, ladies and gentlemen, and a happy Thanksgiving to you all. This is C.P. McGregor welcoming you to Proudly We Hail, the United States Army and Air Force presentation, soon to be full grown. The tale's later, but now, act one of our play, A Story of Thanksgiving, starring Philip Terry as Donald Stark. <laughs> Thanksgiving week began with lots of cold weather in the best tradition of the season. And in addition to the warmth of the fires in the fireplaces, present in the hearts of many, I'm sure, was the warmth of human kindness which belongs to Thanksgiving. But the warm feeling Donald Stark had deep down inside was not exactly caused by the season. Frankly, it wasn't. The cause was a house, a newly furnished house in Sunnyvale, small perhaps, but cozy. And most important, it was just the right location for Virginia. I met old man Finley at the house that day and tried to reach an agreement on the sale. Old man Finley was the builder, as old as an oak tree and as caustic as soda. That made for a problem, particularly when my down payment was not what it might have been. Who's there? Oh, yeah, it's me, Mr. Finley. Well, you don't have to walk on those hardwood floors, do you? What do you think I got those runners down for? Oh, I, I'm sorry. People come tramping in here, gawking around. You'd think my house was a union station. Oh, but don't you remember me, Mr. Finley? I was looking at your house the other day. We're thinking of buying it. Oh, you are, huh? Well, you're lucky. Best house I ever built. And I built 397 of them. You told me that the other day. And I'll keep telling you, boy. I want you to know what you're getting. Oh, I know. Believe me, I know. Well, how do you want to handle it? Cash? Why, yes. What I have of it. What do you mean? Well, Mr. Finley, I only have $500 to pay down. $500? Tell me this, boy. You got a wife? Oh, yes. Children? Well, we're planning. Uh, it's good. Don't let them tear up this house. Not that they could. Build like granite. All right, boy, it's a deal. Thanks, Mr. Finley. I'll get the money to you tomorrow. Hello? Honey, I just got through talking to old man Finley. We're in. What? He accepted the down payment. Oh. You certainly can, and probably save the old miser a stroke. Oh, now, honey, that's no way to talk about Uncle Clarence. He's the only relative I have, and I think he's just conservative. He's conservative, all right. Too conservative to even see you when you had pneumonia and me lugging an M1 around in Italy. But, darling, he was busy at the time, and besides, we've been over. Oh, honey, honey, let's skip it. I feel too good to get into a discussion of your Uncle Clarence. See you tonight. Uncle Clarence was conservative with his money. Twin padlocks on each pocket. I was very glad we didn't have to ask for the key. Well, I headed for work down at Byers Hardware. I was walking on a cloud. As I rounded the corner and headed for the store, there, as usual, was Johnny, the little crippled boy who had the shoe shine stand and sold papers. Johnny was a special friend to us. He used to look after Virginia when I was overseas. And the time when she had pneumonia, he was the only one around. Such a nice boy. Always cheerful, and today, whistling as usual. Well, good morning, Mr. Stark. Johnny, my boy. Shine him up. Why not? Not the wife, Mr. Stark. Oh, just fine, Johnny, thank you. She'll never forget the favors you did for her when she was in the hospital, and she still talks about the flowers you sent her. You're such a nice boy, Johnny. I, I bet you do that for all your good customers. No, sir, just my friends. Johnny, I... I almost forgot. Mrs. Stark and I would like to have you have Thanksgiving dinner with us. Oh, gee, that'll be swell. You like turkey? Well, I sure do. My wife hadn't said anything about having Johnny over for Thanksgiving dinner, and I hadn't either. I guess I wanted to forget the fact that she was almost taken from me, and we'd both forgotten those flowers and the way he would hobble over to the hospital each day, rain or shine, crutches and all. Oh, we'd thanked him at the time, sure, but funny how quickly some things can let you down. 
I went into the hardware store and got to work. There was a lot of new merchandise, and when I saw one item, I was really brought down. It, it was one of those motor chairs for invalids. I knew Johnny would see it when he brought in the newspapers that afternoon, and for some reason, I almost dreaded to hear the sound of the crutches on the floor. Paper, Mr. Stark? Oh, sure, Johnny. Thank you. Hey, what's this? Oh, it just came in. I don't even know anything about the manufacturer. Hey, this is for me. Wow, red leather, too. <laughs> I don't think it's real leather, Johnny. Well, it looks real to me. And a horn, too. Hey, can I try it? Oh, sure. Oh, what a <laughs> horn. Boy, the whole thing's streamlined, too. I wonder how many miles it gets on a gallon. Oh, I don't think it gets very much. Well, what does it say in the folder? Why, uh, only 45 miles to the gallon. Only? Why, gee, I wonder what it costs. Over $600, Johnny. 600 Oh, gee, I'd just like to touch it and someday... You bet, Johnny. You bet your life. I watched him leave the store and hobble down the street. Oh, boy, I wished I were a millionaire. I thought of the flowers and all Johnny had done for us and how we were going to reciprocate with a great, big, wonderful Thanksgiving dinner as an afterthought. On the bus going home, I'd forgotten all about the new house. I saw some kids playing hopscotch. I heard their laughter. And when I reached home, my mind was made up. Hello, darling. Hello, my sweet. Mr. Finley called. He said to be sure not to slam the door. It makes cracks in the plaster. Oh, darling, I'm so thrilled. Oh, me too. Honey, did you tear up that letter to Uncle Clarence? I know. Well, put a special delivery stamp on it and mail it. We're going to need that money. But I thought Mr. Finley accepted our down payment. He did. But we've got a debt to pay first. One I'd forgotten all about. We pause briefly from our story starring Philip Terry to bring you an important message. What is the high school graduate most concerned with? Well, to many, it's establishing self in a career. The new regular army offers qualified young men today the finest of careers. An interesting, well-paid assignment with a future. In the Army, you'll be able to train in one of numerous worthwhile skills or trades. Among these are photography, electronics, radio, and medical technician skills. And you'll have the opportunity to study cultural and practical subjects. Many of the courses you never had time for in high school. Best of all, you'll draw that regular high monthly pay right from the day you enlist. Don't pass up this fine opportunity, high school graduates. Get all of the facts on a worthwhile Army career at your nearest U.S. Army recruiting station tomorrow. And now act two of a Thanksgiving Day story starring Philip Perry as Donald Stark. The day before Thanksgiving arrives, and with it, no answer from Uncle Clarence. And Don needs a little bolstering up to go through with his Thanksgiving Day plan. Is that you, darling? Hello, sweet. Any mail? No mail. Oh, I don't know, honey. I've been thinking this over. If Uncle Clarence doesn't come through... Don't say that. He will. Maybe if we were to get the house and then... Darling, I'm surprised at you. You're doing the most wonderful thing in the world. But, honey, we've waited so long for that house. Johnny doesn't know anything about what we've really planned. Don, we've made a decision. Let's stick to it. I'm sure that tomorrow will be the most wonderful Thanksgiving ever for all of us. My wife speaking. Could anybody help but love her? I went down to the office and made arrangements to buy the motor chair. With the discount, it cost me $467.90. I guess I should have felt great. I, I tried to, but when I laid out all that money and old man Finley called... Hello? Well, boy? Uh, yes, Mr. Finley. Where are you, boy? What about my house? Well, I'll tell you, Mr. Finley. Where's your word? You said you'd be over with the down payment. What are you made of, boy? Rock, maple, or pine? Well, something has come up, Mr. Finley. Well, I got 15 people after this house, you know. Finest house ever built. And I built 430 of them. I know that, Mr. Finley. I think you'd have the courtesy to call me at least. Well, I've been waiting, Mr. Finley. I've to... been waiting, too. I'm not going to wait any longer. Goodbye. Oh, there you are, Mr. Stark. How are you? Fine. See ya. Gonna have a paper today? Sure, Johnny. Thanks. I'm looking forward to tomorrow, Mr. Stark. Gee, I can hardly wait for that turkey dinner. Johnny, you're going to like it. That's one thing we can be sure of. 
Thanksgiving morning, I went down to the store to pick up the motor chair. I brought it home, and we parked it in front. Virginia put the turkey on, and then we went over to pick up Johnny. As we returned and got out, Johnny didn't see it for a minute. But then... Hey, it's that motor chair in front of your house. Yes, Johnny. What's it doing here? Somebody left it here, Johnny, and it has your name on it. My name? Oh, Mr. Stark, it can't. Yes, it, it does, Johnny. You did it. Oh, it, it's so shiny. You know, when I saw it that day, the horn and, and 45 miles in a gallon, I said a prayer. But I never thought... I'd said many prayers before, but... Oh, Mr. Stark. Well, we took it around the block. First me, and then Johnny. And it paid off for everything. Then Virginia called me upstairs. There was excitement in her voice. Don, you want it on the telephone. Me? Yes. It's your Uncle Clarence. No. Here's the phone. Hello? Boy, what's the matter with you anyway? Oh, why, Haven't I... you gumption enough to let a body know? Have to keep everything to yourself? Well, I... I... Had to call your sweet wife. She told me the whole story. I'll tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to let you in that fine house of mine without a down payment. Mr. Finley. Well, after what's happened, what else can a good Christian do on Thanksgiving Day? Mr. Finley, you're a champion. Well, I, I have another interest, too. Spent time in a wheelchair myself as a boy. You did? Yes, and if they'd had one of them motor carts in my time, I, well, I'd have gone to New York and built the Empire State Building. Curtain falls in the final act of a Thanksgiving Day story. Our star, Philip Terry, will return for a curtain call after this timely message from Wendell Niles. Take your choice and you pay no money. In fact, Uncle Sam pays you right from the day you enlist. That's the Air Force Aviation Career Plan. And by take your choice, high school graduates, I mean just this. You select the Air Force training and technical school you wish to attend. After you have been accepted for that school, then you sign the enlistment papers. You can't go wrong on that, high school graduates. Apply right now at your nearest Army recruiting station. Now here again is our star and our producer. I thanks, Phil, for a swell job. My pleasure, C.P. I understand they're really keeping you busy these days. Well, C.P., not too busy to catch a newscast or read a headline. That's why it was such a pleasure to appear for a sponsor as timely and important as Army recruiting. But now, C.P., your audience will want to know the playbill for next week. Before announcing the star, Phil, a word to our Theater of Stars audience. Your requests, ladies and gentlemen, will become an actuality when Proudly We Hail goes a full half hour the first of the year. Next week, Proudly We Hail stars Robert Hutton in A Flight to Saskatoon. Join us, won't you? Thanks again to Philip Terry, who appeared through the courtesy of the Hollywood Coordinating Committee, which arranges the appearances of all motion picture stars on this program. Until next week, and Robert Hutton on Proudly We Hail, this is C.P. McGregor saying thanks for listening, and cheerio from Hollywood. Hollywood.